Perfect. Hello, everyone in the uh, uh, in the world of College Wise on the other side of the West Coast. Uh, my name is Earl Makem, and I am the Stripe Scans facilitator tonight. Um, one second, Michaela. I'm going to take over the screen from you real quick. I'm going to give it back, though. Um, so uh, those of you on the other end, um, uh, I just want to welcome you to the College Wise Virtual College Fair powered by Stripe Scan. Um, a few housekeeping items before I pass the baton off to our first presenter from Bryn Mawr. Um, your Q&A function is live functional and um, that is the way that you will communicate with our representatives who are presenting tonight. Um, your camera and mic are off, so please uh, um, know that. Um, if there are other uh, StriveScan college-wise sessions to, uh, to sign up for that you're interested in, please do so at that particular link that you see on the screen. And the recording of this session will be available in about a week uh, on the same page that you registered for this session. Um, okay, so we have five uh, presenters tonight and they will go in this order. Um, they will go uh, uh, Bryn Mawr College, uh, Muhlenberg University, Arcata, uh, Muhlenberg College, sorry, um, Arcata University, Drexel University, and Virto Education. So, all right, without further ado, I am going to um, tag in Michaela from Benoit um, and uh, uh, Tara from Muhlenberg. You are on deck. So, uh, Michaela, you can go ahead and take it away. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, I'm really excited to be here with everyone to share a little bit about Bryn Mawr and happy to get started. Uh, first of all, good evening, everybody. Um, it's late over here on the East Coast, but I'm really happy to be here with you. Um, the first thing I always like to get out of the way is that Bryn Mawr is a small liberal arts college located in suburban Pennsylvania, um, near the city of Philadelphia, about 20 minutes outside the city. Um, and the most important thing to know about Bryn Mawr is that we are first and foremostly a women's college. So I'm so sorry if you're not the parent to um, a female identified student, um, but hopefully uh, you can file this away. Um, and sometimes it's just nice to learn new things. So like I said, we are located in suburban Philadelphia. We serve just under 1400 students um, from 44 states and about 46 countries. So we really do try and promote diversity as a part of our student body. So we are about 21% international students, 32% student of color and 19% first generation students, which all of which are statistics that obviously we're quite proud of. We really want our students to be learning um, in an environment where they feel challenged um, and where they um, are excited about being in conversation and community with one another. So. Um, a couple more things about our size, you know, we do have a nine to one student to faculty ratio, which we feel like is obviously very important to our, our students getting the most out of their studies. Uh, we practice mostly the Socratic method or discussion based classes, which we really do feel like enables our students to have um, greater um, intersection within the classroom. Our most popular majors are going to be students in the STEM field at Bryn Mawr. We do graduate just over two and a half times the national average of women in STEM degrees um, compared to our uh, peer colleges, which we're really excited about. We really want to be promoting women into STEM disciplines. And more than that, we want to give women the support structures they need to be competitive and successful in those fields. In addition to STEM though, we do have a number of other popular majors, including English, um, and political science. And like every other liberal arts um, college in this country, we do see that psychology is quite popular for us as well. Um, something unique about us is our uh, partnership with uh, schools in our area of Haverford and Swarthmore, who we share a consortium with, as well as our ties to the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, we enjoy the closest relationship to Haverford. Students at Bryn Mawr can actually major in something at Haverford. Um, if we don't offer it as a part of our, uh, our course offerings, they can go over to Haverford, get that degree, um, all of the courses that they need, but then still get their diploma from Bryn Mawr, which we really feel does expand all of our students' social, academic, and professional opportunities. In addition to that, we do offer study abroad as a really core part of what we do. So not only do we offer 
90 pre-approved study abroad program. We also offer what we call our 360 degree course program, which is a really cool interdisciplinary expression of our liberal arts values in which our faculty every semester will vision up some themes, for example, environmental policy and education. Um, and the students will take three courses in three distinct disciplines around that theme, which culminates in a culminates, excuse me, in a field work experience that those students participate in. Um, this is a special program that our students apply into. And because of that, the field work program is really important and it can exist either abroad or domestically. For example, one year we did have students go over to um, Germany to meet with uh, leaders of a fully sustainable town to talk not only about the physical implications of creating sustainability in a town, but the community buy-in that effort took. And what's really ex exciting about our 360 degree program is that those fieldwork um, components are covered at cost by the college. So a student won't pay any more to do that. It's a part of their registration as a part of the course. In addition to all of that, we do offer over a hundred clubs and organizations at Bryn Mawr, plus hundreds more at our partner colleges, as well as 12 NCAA Division III sports teams, which of course doesn't include football because we are a women's college. Um, beyond that, we do see that research and internships are very big parts of uh, how our students engage to find uh, positive career outcomes. So we do see that about 79% of our students hold an internship in their time at Bryn Mawr, and that'll be either in Philadelphia or beyond. We really feel like that's important. So we try and make that as accessible um, as possible by awarding just over $750,000 annually in summer funding for students to do that, both abroad and domestic. So we really, really do believe that, um, you know, we know that unpaid internships are sort of the reality of our world, but we do know that that's not always equitable for our students. Uh, perhaps a student needs to work to support their family over the summer, or perhaps a student has an opportunity that's very exciting in a place where they don't live or no one in their family lives. So we want our students not to feel hemmed in by financial constraints. So that's why we do provide that funding for our students. And because of all that, we do see that um, about 97% of our students do report a positive career outcome just one year after graduation. Um, Beyond all of that, at Bryn Mawr, we also offer just over 20 combined degree programs, which we really, again, think promotes equity because it allows our students to, uh, to complete their undergraduate and their master's degrees in a shorter amount of time. So that's just a small tidbit of Bryn Mawr. If you have any more um, questions, just feel free to ask them. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Michaela. Uh, Tara, there you are, you're on the screen and um, you and Berg, you're up next. Thank you so much. Good evening. I noticed that there are quite a few parents in the room. So welcome. I'm so delighted you are here today. So right up the road from Bryn Mawr, come on up to Muhlenberg College. Welcome to Muhlenberg College. My name is Tara Nealon. I want to pack as much as I can about the Muhlenberg experience and our community into a few minutes with you this evening. Students choose Muhlenberg and faculty are committed to Muhlenberg because we are a community of learners who want to develop new skills, to stretch our imaginations and to challenge existing beliefs. Muhlenberg is known for and proud of our community. Well, these are some numbers that are coming up on your screen right now. These are some numbers about Muhlenberg. What's important to remember is that all of our students are individuals who come together to form the Muhlenberg community. Our students are supportive of one another. They are incredibly creative. They are curious, they are resilient, and they are kind. We are recognized in the rankings for best value, best food, I know that's important, best theater, we've earned gold for being green, an A plus grade from 538 pollster ranking, and our students have been honored for their community engagement. One third of our students do identify as Jewish, one third identify as Roman Catholic. In, in the athletic department, we are the mules of Muhlenberg. We play in Division Three Centennial Conference. We have won more than 33 conference championships in 20 years. And our football team has been conference champs the last two years. We do academics, athletics, and the arts exceptionally well at Muhlenberg. 
This is an aerial view of part of our campus. You can see it's in a suburban setting. We are about 20 minutes to the totally awesome Lehigh Valley Airport. We are one hour north of Philadelphia and two hours west of New York City in the city of Allentown, which is fun fact, third largest and the fastest growing city in Pennsylvania. Our location in the Lehigh Valley lends itself to opportunities for our students to learn, to grow, to do outside of the classroom. That could be shadowing or research experience at one of the hospitals in the Lehigh Valley Health Network, having a part-time job or catching a game at a minor league club, um, going to an amusement park, symphony hall, Target, Starbucks, art museums, and so on. We are traditional liberal arts college on a very broad stroke. What that means is one third of a student's classes are within their major, one third in the liberal arts and one third exploratory, which often leads to another major or minor, sometimes in a pre-professional field of study or, with an, or to an academic partnership like that of with Villanova's law school. Popular majors as identified on the common application of first year students for the last few years have been business, theater, biology, psychology. My absolute favorite is undecided. Yes, we have public health. Yes, that theater does include musical theater. No students don't have to audition in order to major in theater at Muhlenberg. Growing in popularity among our first year applicants is also neuroscience and computer science. The flexibility for our students to pursue their interests with the support of their advisors and their professors leads to an enriching college experience at Muhlenberg. Our students are engaged in their learning in the classroom and are incredibly engaged outside of the classroom. Our students are supportive of one another. Again, they are curious, they are smart, kind, good citizens, and yes, they have fun. There is something to do and ways to engage every day of the week at Muhlenberg, and that could be from programming from the Activities Council, Multicultural Office, Greek Life, Knitting Club, Faith-Based Clubs, Affinity Groups, Intramural Sports, 50 Theater Dance Performances, and so much more. Our faculty do serve as scholars and mentors to our students. Our faculty are incredibly committed to our students' growth and development as an academic and a community member. The, the level of care that our faculty have for our students goes well beyond the classroom. They're often in the front row cheering the student on in their athletic contest or their acapella group, or perhaps doing one-on-one -on -one individual research over the summertime with that student. And oftentimes their mentorship Mentorship goes well beyond their years on campus together. No matter what college your child or for the students in the room, what co college you do choose, be sure to take full advantage of the career center opportunities for you. The Muhlenberg experience does lead to powerful outcomes. Our graduates go on to become change makers and teachers and scientists and actors, business owners, coaches, journalists, attorneys, researchers, physicians, leaders in their chosen field and protective members of their community and their workplace. And graduates have lifelong access to the Career Center. On this slide here, you see Muhlenberg's famous red doors. This is a testament to our Lutheran roots and a sign of welcome. You can also see on this slide what is required to complete an application of Muhlenberg as well as our application deadlines. Notably, we have been test score optional for over 20 years. All students are considered for merit-based money and also honors consideration. Students can audition for a talent-based scholarship in theater, dance, film, studio art, music, vocal, instrumental, any art really for a talent-based scholarship. We do review applications holistically, taking into account all parts of a student's application, including demonstrated interest, which is often an admissions interview with an admissions professional, and character also plays a role in the decision-making process. When we read applications, our applicants present with a rigorous curriculum like honors and AP courses, and they use their application to speak to their passions, their interests, and their talents, all of which demonstrate what's important to them and how they'll be a good fit with the Muhlenberg community. Since 1848, we've been an institution of higher learning committed to our students' intellectual and personal growth. We look forward to learning more about you. Thank you so much. Okay, great, awesome. Um, so, uh, Kevin from Arcadia, there he is. You are up next and off.
Hi, everybody. My name is Kevin McGann. I'm the Associate Director at Arcadia University. Really happy to be here with you all tonight, and thank you for taking time out of your evening to join us to learn about more about all of our institutions. Arcadia is a private liberal arts college just outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, we're a small school with just under 2,000 undergraduate students, um, but with a lot of different opportunities with 65 different fields of study available on campus, um, ranging from your traditional liberal arts programs like biology and psychology, to some of our newest majors in public health, our global media program, and our other major abroad programs um, that we offer. One of the most important things to us at Arcadia is for our students to get to have those personal relationships with their faculty members, getting to work with them hands-on in the classroom and in the labs and preparing for what is going to come next after leaving Arcadia. With an average class size of just 14 students for our first year students, um, our, you're gonna jump right into that experience at Arcadia, really getting to work with the faculty members and starting to develop those mentorship type relationships as you move through your four years with us. Outside of the classroom, our students are extremely involved at Arcadia, and our student life is very much student-driven. Um, our president at the university comes from the student affairs side of higher ed, and it's very important to him and the culture he's instilled on campus that our students have a say in what is happening and how we are kind of running things at the university. Next year, we'll jump up to 26 NCAA athletic programs um, with men's and women's ice hockey being added to the campus offerings. Um, we don't even with 26 programs, we don't have a football team, um, but with tons of different opportunities and we per participate in the middle Atlantic conferences and amongst um, division three athletic programs in Pennsylvania, Maryland and New Jersey primarily. Um, outside of the athletics realm, we have over 60 different clubs and activities at Arcadia, which kind of will range from year to year and come and go as the students dictate kind of what is happening on campus. We also have an extremely active community service um, life at the university being right on the edge of the city of Philadelphia. We try to give back as much as we can. Um, and as I mentioned, student life really is driven by the current students on campus. So one of our newest athletics programs, which is eSports, which was added last year, came from and was developed out of a club that had been started a few years ago on campus by some students. We do guarantee housing for all four years for all of our undergraduates on campus, um, from traditional residence halls to apartment style living for our upperclassmen. And we have a small group of first year students that get to live in the castle, um, which is Gray Towers Castle, our national historic landmark on campus. One of the things we have become most well known for at Arcadia is our study abroad programs. Um, for nine of the past 10 years, we've been ranked first in the nation in study abroad um, participation, offering programs that range from week-long experiences, including our spring preview program for first-year students, um, which unfortunately we won't be able to offer this year, of course, with the pandemic ongoing, um, but a lot of different opportunities um, with the students last in last year's graduating class earning credits in 39 different countries before leaving Arcadia and 76% of them having used their passports and earned credits abroad before graduation. We even offer first year study abroad programs um, for a full semester long program at the Arcadia Center in London, England, which is a really unique program where you can go study in London with a group of other Arcadia um, first year students and have that a big international experience built in and part of your pathway through your four years with us at Arcadia. In addition to our, the curriculum that our students are following and their curriculums within their major, we have a lot of other programs that kind of as add-ons or co-curricular programs for students to choose from. Um, I just mentioned the first year study abroad experience. We also have our honors program, our college to career scholars program, which is a great option for students who are coming in undeclared to participate in, way to kind of start developing an idea of what kind of majors can get you towards a career pathway that you might be interested in. Um, that actually guarantees an internship at the end of your sophomore year, um, the summer between sophomore and junior year on campus. A lot of these programs are just pretty new, so there's a lot for opportunities for our students to come in and work with the directors of the programs to develop some of the curriculum and what the groups are doing on campus, um, like our Civic Scholars Program, which just launched this year and has been really involved on campus and in the local community doing voter registration drives and things of that nature as we approach next week's election. 
one of the most important things at Arcadia and probably anywhere and uh, as part of the college decision is helping our students and making sure they're ready for what comes next after graduation. So on here, you can see where some of the things that our class of 2019 headed into um, with just under 73% going in and working full time in jobs related to their major. So our students aren't just taking jobs that are be able to graduate and start their careers off right away. Um, we do have a significant number of students that continue on to graduate school, many of them staying with us on campus at Arcadia, moving into our doctorate in physical therapy program and our physician's assistant program. Um, while other students will continue on in their education and working, and we do have some students that go into volunteer service with our pre-Peace Corps program and other programs um, like the AmeriCorps, and some who are still figuring out what comes next. But our Office of Career Education is available to work with our, our graduates lifelong, as lifelong learners, so as students change careers, being able to make the decision for what comes next. As you're getting into your college search, if there's questions you have about Arcadia, um, you can reach out to us. On here, you can see a quick snapshot of what we're looking for in our application process. And it's really easy to find out more about Arcadia from our website. And we have a virtual open house coming up on November 7th, so just a couple of weeks away. Um, and that is able to, you're able to register for that right online. So thanks for taking some time to learn more about us tonight. Okay, great. Cheryl from Drexel U. Hi everyone. Um, Thanks so much for having me tonight. I'm more than happy to talk about Drexel University. So we're actually going to stay in the Philadelphia area right now, but actually head into the city. So Drexel is a large private tier one research university located right in Philadelphia. So we are an urban school. City streets run through our campus. You'll see taxis going by. There are food trucks all over the place. You see the skyscrapers sort of right behind you from campus. But that word campus is important. We do still have a full campus and campus experience for students. Students live on campus for at least their first two years. So we are residential. We have really strong student life. I'll be talking a little bit about that um, in a few minutes. But I want to start off by setting the scene for where we're located within Philadelphia. We're about a 25 minute walk from the very center of the city or two minutes on the subway. We're also right across the street from the University of Pennsylvania. And then the University of the Sciences of Philadelphia is on the other side of Penn's campus. So altogether, we have over 40,000 college age students in our neighborhoods. There's always a lot going on. It's a very active and fun environment. Our undergraduate population makes up a little over 15,000 of those students in the area. So again, we're a larger school for a private school, but you're not going to see that impact your classroom experiences as much as you might expect. You can see here our median class size student to faculty ratio are a lot smaller than from what you would see at other schools of our size. And that's very intentional. We have a strong focus on experiential education. So we do a lot of hands-on project-based work and that's not something that you can do if if you're in a large lecture. You might have one or two depending on the major that you're in and the general education classes you have to take, but anytime you're in a larger uh, lecture you're going to break down at least once a week into a smaller recitation or lab group to go over the material. We have over 80 majors across 15 colleges and schools, so there is a lot to choose from. Some of the things that we're well known for would be engineering, business, computer science, nursing, media arts and design. We have great programs um, in communications, psychology, public health. We have a program even in culinary arts, a bachelor's degree. So I say that just to really illustrate the breadth of opportunities at Drexel. If you know what you want to study, you would apply directly to that major. All of our programs are direct entry, so it's not pre-nursing or pre-engineering. You start off right in that program. If you're not sure what you want to study, no problem. We have undeclared options within most of our colleges and schools. If you have a direction you think you want to go, if you don't have a direction or you say, I could go one of 20 different ways, um, we have a a great first year exploratory studies program that comes with extra advising and an upperclassman mentor. So it really helps to guide you as you're making your decision about what you want to study. Heading back to that idea of experiential education, I just want to highlight how that's going to impact your classroom experiences. You will still have textbooks, you will still have a professor, you are going to be listening and reading quite a bit, but you're also going to do projects that help to prepare you for the real world before you get there. So quick example of that, we have a class called the Dragon Fund. We give student 
Students money from our endowment started out 10 years ago with $250,000 to invest in the stock market. So real money, real stock market, there's actual stakes behind that. But even with those stakes, there are no real world implications if something goes wrong. If an investment doesn't go the way that you expect, you're not going to fail the class. You're not ruining a relationship with a client. You just learn not to make a mistake like that again in the future. So it's real world experience with a safety net in place. Um, but actually throughout the time we've offered that program, the amount of money has grown. The investments have done quite well. So over 10 years, the money has grown from $250,000 to over $2 million that students are working with. All of that experiential education really prepares students for their co-op program. Co-op is like a more in-depth version of an internship. It is a six month break from your classes where you work full time in your field of interest typically. Um, most often a paid job. We have about 1600 employers we work with all over the world. We've offered this program since 1919. So it's a huge part of who we are. It helps you to explore your area of interest, make sure you're headed down the right path. You're building a strong resume. You're building connections in your field. So it really does prepare you well, whether you're looking to apply for a job, grad school, med school, law school, once you graduate from Drexel. Heading on from all of the academic and work experiences onto campus life, we do so much at Drexel. We have over 350 clubs and organizations. We're division one for sports. We have performing arts and Greek life. We're very involved in community service. That's something that's very important to us. In fact, all students their first year take a civic engagement class and are required to do community service hours. Not many, it's just 10 hours, but we want students to see that there's need in the city and that we're in a position to make a difference. Philadelphia is a great city, um, sixth largest in the country. So there's a lot to do and then a lot of other cities close by and accessible by train if you want to explore the East Coast if you're not from there. And then finally, the application process. We do full holistic review at Drexel. And so we're looking at everything you send to make a decision. We are test optional for this year. We've not made a decision for going forward after this year. So keep an eye on our website. That will be um, posted probably early next year. But we're looking at your transcripts, your letters of recommendation, your activities, your essay. We want to see that you as a whole person are a good fit for Drexel and we're a good fit for you. You can find out on the website who will be reading your application. So we're broken down by different territories and whoever covers your territory will read your application first so you can engage with them um, and really feel a connection there. Everyone is automatically considered for merit-based scholarships as a part of the process. If you want to be considered for need-based aid though, you do need to fill out the CSS profile and the FAFSA. Um, if you have questions in the future, feel free to come to our open house. There's going to be one on November 15th. You can learn more about the department or school that you're interested in. And you can also always contact me. I am more than happy to help if you have questions. Also remember to drop questions in the Q&A box. We're all here to help. So don't be afraid to ask questions, whether it's general or about our specific universities. But that's all for me. Thanks so much and have a great evening. Okay, perfect. All right. <clears throat> Thank you to all five of our presenters this evening. Um, I believe um, Josh still needs to go. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's right. My, my, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Shara. Josh, um, I thought we were there at the end and that is completely my fault. So, um, hey, I'm going to turn it over to you and you have the floor now. So off you go, sir. All right, man, I'm, I won't take it personally. So I, I appreciate it. And thanks thanks for the heads up, Cheryl. <laughs> um, thanks everybody for coming. It's great to be here and, and talk to you all. I, I really wish I could see your faces and meet you in person. Um, so more power to you for sticking out this tough year. Um, yeah, raise your hand if, you're, if you have Zoom fatigue. Um, I'm really feeling it, I'm not gonna lie. And uh, I'm gonna assume you're all raising your hands too and, and being like, yeah, me too, Josh. Um, anyway, again, thank you guys for taking the time, parents, students. This is such a tough year. So the fact you're sticking it out is um, just, again, more power to all of you. Um, I represent Virto Education. Uh, for parents, I'm going to ask you to bear with me. For students, uh, just check it out. But um, this is something a little bit different. If you're a student or your student has ever wanted to study abroad, travel, see the world, what we're doing is offering a way for students to travel to start their college experience. Uh, to earn full credits per semester and have um, kind of a more accessible college career. We're going to talk about what that looks like, but really for us, the idea is 
start college abroad, understand the world around you, use that as a springboard to help you pick your major, your classes and your career. Um, yeah, it's such a great way to learn about yourself. I've, I've been working abroad with students for years and years, and I can tell you how powerful it is from firsthand experience. So um, what we do is send students abroad, again, for their first semester, depending on what location they'd like to go to. The experience looks different, but again, they'll walk away with 16 credits per semester. So they could start their college career in London studying business. They could start their college career in the South Pacific, working with marine bio NGOs and, and the Australian zoo and that kind of thing. It just depends what a student's looking for. Um, but every semester is fully accredited no matter where they go. Um, the way that I like to frame Verto to students um, is that they can kind of think about us like the common application. We actually partner with 50 universities across the country, one of whom who's here tonight, shout out to Mullenberg. Uh, Tara, you had me at best food. So that's awesome. I did not know that. <laughs> um, so the way that our partner college process works is that students can apply to any of our partner schools through the Verto application. It's free. Uh, it gives students a higher shot getting into those universities, and we'll talk about why that is. And so when they're accepted to Verto, they'll receive a joint admission decision. We'll say, hey, congratulations, you got into Verto education. You also got into Mullenberg or the University of Oregon or whichever school they're looking at. And they know that when they're spending their first semester abroad, they know which college they're a part of. They know that their credits are counting towards their graduation. But again, they're getting to start out in the real world. Um, not kind of going through the motions like they normally would on campus. So that's the model. That's the idea. Uh, we'll skip this slide. That's Will Farrell. He's the man. Um, and I'll go through just two examples of different semesters that students can go on because I got like four minutes left. Um, and this just it gives you a kind of uh, sense of some of the stuff students are doing. So let's talk about, let's talk about Milan. So on our semester in Milan, uh, students are studying philosophy, development, and art history. Um, what we've tried to do is make the courses relevant to where students are studying. So, I mean, Italy, come on, what better place in the world to study philosophy and art history than in Milan? It's an incredible city. What's really cool about this semester is actually students get to uh, take their classes at an Italian university. They'll be with Verto students and professors. Obviously, class will be taught in English, but if they're looking for that kind of traditional study abroad, European experience, this is a great option for them. All of the credits, no matter which semester they travel on uh, will count as gen ed. So even if they're going to Italy with us, but not intending to major in philosophy or art history, uh, the credits will still help them graduate. We can talk a little bit more about that in a second. Maybe there won't be time, that's okay. Um, we also have field semesters, which are a little bit different, um, where students are never setting foot in a classroom, a traditional four wall classroom. They'll earn the same credits, but the idea here is really immerse yourself in a different environment and understand the topics you're studying through the eyes of somebody else, through the eyes of somebody who lives there. Um, so let's look at Latin America. Um, this is Hawaii, it's beautiful. Um, so in Latin America, and this is true for all the field semesters, the courses that they take correspond with a specific location within the region. So global health with us in Latin America, students will live in a base house uh, in the jungle in the Dominican Republic with their student, uh, with their peers and faculty. And every day they'll get up and they'll do different community visits and they'll look at irrigation systems and uh, study how access to clean water affects public health. They'll do a, um, an ethnographic study and interview somebody in Spanish. Um, again, it's really about understanding the place you're in through the eyes of the people that live there. And they'll earn these college credits and these courses, but they're doing it through a really hands-on uh, kind of dynamic way. So this is our base house in the DR. You can see they're in kind of this valley community in the jungle. It's an incredible experience. And also if you're someone who's like looking to get out there and unplug, which I think we all should at some point, uh, this is a really good opportunity to do that. In Costa Rica here, we do a nice bit um, a development component with an environmental twist to do some sea turtle conservation with a great NGO down there. Um, they're adorable, they're sea turtles. So that's a plus. Um, but again, this is just an example of some of the stuff uh, students can do with Verto and we have a lot of different semesters going on. So South Pacific, beautiful. Um, I definitely wanna to touch on partner colleges. Um, so I'll go to this slide. So what we do again is partner with 50 universities, uh, schools that might kind of um, uh, click for you guys, Temple, Muhlenberg, uh, Bucknell is a partner school. You can see them all here. Students can apply through Verto uh, to any of our partner colleges. Again, this is a free application. They don't need to apply to the partner school directly. And what we're seeing, which is super exciting, is that when a student applies through the Verto app to a partner college, even if their GPA test grades aren't as good as the school might normally require, 
the colleges know that students who travel just do better and they're just more excited and, and focused and ready to learn and be on their campus. So we can get students into reach schools, which is something we're seeing across the board, which is so, so exciting. So this is a screenshot of the application. Students can literally just tick off on a box which partner schools they'd like to apply to. So again, we will offer a joint admission decision based on their application. And we'll say congratulations, you got into Broto and you also got into Bucknell or Temple or wherever they're applying to. 20 seconds. Um, affordability is huge for Berto. Um, we have need-based scholarships um, up in upwards of uh, $10,000 based on income. We have an honors program for high achieving students um, where they'll go deep into things like climate change and racism and social justice. Um, this is a need-based tuition. So if they're really low income, there's no tuition. I'm happy to talk more about this with you guys. I'm, I'm being kicked out. Uh, if you can quickly scan the QR code, if you're excited or interested, I'll see it come through and you can uh, we can do a one-on-one -on -one and talk about traveling in in your life. Um, all right. Thank you, everybody. All right. Great, Josh. Thanks. You made it. Um, and um, okay. Now I think we um, are, are done for the round robin this evening. Um, I've got one last housekeeping item to share. And then I'm going to ask all our reps to just to come back live on screen with me um, to say one last goodbye and then, um, and good night. And so before I do that, so here are our quick points. Um, thank you again for joining us. A quick survey will be sent out at the end of this particular um, webinar. And we ask um, that you complete that survey so that we can provide this session um, better for you um, next time. Um, and if you still have the link, to the, to the uh, Stripe Scan session, you can sign up for more sessions there. Last but not least, this session was recorded and if you need it, will be online at the link that you registered for this session at um, in about a week, okay? All right, um, all right, so quick goodbyes. Um, uh, Michaela from Bryn Mawr, um, thank you so much. Thank you to Tara from Muhlenberg and Kevin from Arcadia, uh, Cheryl from Drexel and Joss from Virto. Virto. And um, I hope everyone um, learned something new tonight about these five institutions. They enlightened you and I know they left you with their contact information on the screen. So I do encourage you to contact them if you have specific questions. Folks uh, out there, it was great to, uh, to have you and to be with you, the folks in front of me um, and our five panelists. Thank you so much for your time this evening. All right, have a great night. Bye-bye now.